My buddy Baruti is with me because he is an enormous fan of the Dead Rising franchise. Your girlfriend actually got you Dead Rising 4 as I have been playing it. The rocket and ray guns got in the way of me being able to review it, but it turned out great because I get to review it with you. What do you think of Dead Rising 4? Victor Lucas, Frank is back. <laughs> we are here with Dead Rising 4 with our pals at Capcom Vancouver. Yep. They're dear and true to our heart. Down because... the street over that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we go visit them right now. But, you know, the, the, the Dead Rising series is always a series that, you know, Keiji and Ifune wanted to create as a kind of market the Western culture to the Japanese audience. Right. And uh, that, that's poke, kind of... poke some holes and poke fun at it a little bit, I think, right? Exactly. And, you yeah. know, it, the, the series overall was a very Mega Man-esque series. Uh, you know, when I say that, because it was very reliant on, you know, trial and error, mm. where you would play through it and you would not know when the survivors would come out. You'd not know where the psychopaths come out. So your first four or five playthroughs would be kind of bumpy. Yeah. But as you play it more and more, you just become so great at it and so much better. And you just, you, you feel like a god by, by your 10th playthrough. I had never... Con conceived of that as a Mega Man style game, but you're absolutely correct because of all these external pressures, the time constraints and the sort of kludgy, clunky controls of the early Dead Rising games. There was a lot of stumbling and there was a lot of do-over and that is not the case in Dead Rising Exactly. This is, it's Everything has been streamlined like crazy in this game. That's right. It totally says Forget this, we're gonna go our own direction here. We're now gonna make it a Western game targeting the Western audience. Yeah. So the time restraints are gone. It's a lot more kind of crazy, all about killing the zombies. You know, there's no sense of threat anymore. And that's no. kind of the one little issue I have with this game. There's no real fear of the zombies. There's no time constraints, so you're not really like... You're so powerful in this game. And there's no, like you don't have to even go to the toilet to save your game anymore. Yeah. You, you, there's, you know, there is no pressure. You've yep. got the ability to combo stuff on the fly. You don't have to go to back to a you know a, a sort of a table or anything like that to kind of figure out what ingredients would go. Even the menu system and sorting through your your pages of uh, uh, stuff in your inventory is super streamlined and super fast. All of it seems you know methodically constructed to get you just having fun. And I did have fun with this game, but it didn't feel like Dead Rising to me. That's right. You yeah. know what? It, it totally wasn't our traditional kind of Dead Rising feel. I mean, yeah. as soon as you turn on the game, actually, you know, Frank is back and we're going back to Willamette Mall, which is the mall from the very first Dead Rising game. Yep. And right away, all Dead Rising fans noticed that the voice actor for Frank West has changed. It used to be played by Terrence J. Rotolo, yeah. who is kind of like the David Hater to Solid Snake, wow. as he is to... Except they only made one one well, big game. Well, he, he was also he was also an Ultimate Marvel. Okay, he, he was, was, in, right, he was okay. an Off the Record. Right, okay. He showed up in Dead Rising 2 as a yes, DLC. Yes, he did, sure. So okay. He was Touché. with the series for, for a very long time. David Hater was many, many, many iterations it's, it's in true. years. Yeah. It's true. But now, the, the new voice actor is, uh, is a voice actor named Victor Noslo, yep. who's actually a very unknown voice actor. I think this is his very first game. And he sounds kind of like Jake from Adventure Time or a Bender from Futurama. I, I think it sounded like Tyler Labine a little bit to me, yeah. who's, who's this kind of smart ass guy. I actually asked the people when I was interviewing them at Capcom Vancouver what if it was Tyler Labine. I actually thought for the lines that they gave him, and the character of Frank West is portrayed in this game. He did a great job. I yeah. thought he was great. I, I didn't really miss the other Frank West all that much, because I got to be honest with you, the first Dead Rising game got on, on my nerves after a little while. <laughs> I didn't have the patience to yeah. really love it. I thought it was really cool, but I didn't love it. It yeah. wasn't one of my favorites. Dead Rising 2 I thought was really cool with, uh, with Chuck, actually the motorcycle guy, and saving the daughter and all that stuff. I thought that was really cool. I was blown away by the technical prowess of Dead Rising 3, although that got a little uh, you know, repetitive for me. But Dead Rising 4, and I think it was because of the design decisions, was really hard to stop playing. This is yeah. a really easy game to just kind of get lost in and enjoy, even though it is absolutely repetitive. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you, you just hordes of zombies over and over again. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be finding new blueprints, creating crazy contraptions yep. and crazy weapons. Just how, did, how did your Frank end up? I, I had giant, crazy giant uh, uh, dinosaur feet on, and I think pajama <laughs> bottoms and ski goggles. <laughs> Uh, oh no, no, and then I, I had like a whole hunting outfit with uh, cowboy boots that jangled everywhere I went. And it's just like, you, you, you it's fun to collect all these costumes. Yeah. It's another form of the collection sort yeah. of OCD that you get in here and you just keep trying new things up. But then after a while, it's just like, I don't care what I look like. I was oh, gonna yeah. go slaughter everything, get to the end. Listen, yeah. I ran to the Capcom store and I took the Morgan outfit from Dark Stalkers yeah. and I ran around in the Morgan outfit just slaying zombies. It's really is a lot of fun. And I had people watching me play this game who've never seen Dead Rise 
rising before, yeah. and they were laughing out loud. Yeah. You know, maybe the comedy and the tone isn't for everyone, but there's some of the cinematics, especially in the beginning, I was just laughing. I, I was really genuinely laughing out loud. And, and I, I think, that, yeah, and it's Frank West that makes you laugh the most, yeah. right? Like he is, he faces all kinds of ridiculously over the top, you know, incredible situations. And that's also an issue in the game is that it doesn't really escalate. It's already so crazy right from minute one in the game yeah. that it doesn't really have room to get bigger. And that's kind of a problem when you're trying to sort of keep invested in the game. But Frank's response to this over the top kind of craziness that he's in is always really funny yeah. and droll and dry and yeah I was impressed by all of that. Yeah it just a, a little bit more polish could yeah. have really done this game so much better you know there was a lot of glitches throughout even my first five hours of playing yeah I ran into just zombies stuck on walls and just blueprints going under the level. I, I was in a Hummer and I drove through a bus at one point yeah. it was like not even there it was just like this texture that was there it was weird for sure but you, you think about all of the math and the data yeah. and all of this stuff that has to be kept everywhere not crazy crazy about the fact that the psychos have been transformed into maniacs now yeah. and there's really not any kind of uh, you know repercussion or or consequence by going to take them out or even saving the civilians and stuff you get to update and upgrade your yeah. uh, your your sort of uh, warehouses where you can buy new food and cars and things like that they're what are they safe houses safe like houses a, that's yeah. right but I never did I, because you can collect all the cars and all the clothing and and uh, you can combo weapons so easily I never really spent time in the shopping element yeah, because so true. much is free in this thing right yeah I mean even the the, the safe houses all look the same yes you know they you do, go yeah. into every single one you're like oh it looks the same again and you were mentioning catching the survivals or bringing the survivors back and just as you mentioned you know there's no more of that sense of urgency with no. them because they just kind of appear randomly yep. you know and when you go back to the first or second dead rising game when you find a survivor yeah it's hard bringing them back to the safe house yeah now you just kind of save them and they're they're on their way and who knows where they end up yeah it's definitely very much much more casual overall and and a little mindless and you know not as satisfying and I certainly think of undead nightmare which was just an add-on for uh, Red Dead Redemption and, I, and how awesome that was yeah. and I think like if the Rockstar people decided they want to put they wanted to put zombies in uh, in, in Grand Theft Auto 5 online it would almost be better than this game in a lot of ways which is kind of tragic because there is a lot to love and enjoy in this game and and you do have fun but it doesn't really it doesn't really lift this franchise it doesn't really feel like this is being propelled into like I can't wait for more Dead Rising like, yeah. I'm okay if this franchise takes a break I mean I had a good time technically I think it works pretty well there's you know a lot of funny bits in here there's a lot of fun bits in there I like the ending uh, you know, there's some multiplayer options that you can get lost in as the, well. The multiplayer, I will say, is a little thin, a little stale. You know, there's a character progression system they have. There's like five chapters you can go through. You know, I almost wish they kind of held off on a few features, uh, just kind of to polish them a little bit more and maybe yeah. release it after. I know Dead Rising 3, there was an Apocalypse Edition they, they did. Yeah. And I really can't wait to see what they do with yeah, 4. And, you know, I and DLC see. will come. But yeah. as it stands, I think yeah. this is a great sort of game to take a break from Dead Rising. And if you're a fan of Dead Rising, you might dig the the sort of changes and the difference of this game, but it still has the pure kind of crazy zaniness of, yeah. of a Dead Rising game and the zombie killing. Absolutely. All the heart is really there, you know, yeah. like anyone who maybe you know, before the series, it was not a series that was for everyone. No. You know, it was kind of very hardcore in a sense if you really wanted to get in there. And totally. I think Capcom Vancouver's idea with this was to just become much more accessible yeah. and just to have, you know, make it like a, a fun zombie killing game. Well, you're the you're the diehard Dead Rising person, so what do you say? What's your score? Uh, I'm going to have to give this game an 8 out of 10. It was so close to a 9 just if it was a little bit more polished and yep. just a few more features. I, I dug it too. I'm giving it a 7.5. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.